Everyone's talking about Claw 3.7 Sonnet's amazing coding abilities, but those coding abilities are barely scratching the surface. As an online business owner, I've discovered seven mind-blowing use cases that go way beyond coding and are gonna save you hours of work. 3.7 Sonnet is Anthropic's latest and most intelligent model to date, described as the industry's first hybrid reasoning model. The key innovation here is the ability to function as both a standard AI model that provides quick responses and also a reasoning model that can think for extended periods all in a single model. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what this hybrid reasoning model can really do. But first, if you're new here, my name is Rick Mulready, and for the past 11 years, I've run a multi seven figure online business teaching other online businesses, how to scale and increase profitability in the process. And today I run a community called the AI Playbook, which is all about helping online businesses leverage AI so that you can streamline your business and increase profitability in the process. I will link to the community in the description below. For the first use case, Cloud 3.7 Sonic can create professional quality interactive graphics, infographics, and dashboards in a matter of seconds, check this out. So I've uploaded a spreadsheet that I've created that compares the different AI models to one another. And all I've said here is create an infographic from the attached sheet that shows AI models and their capabilities. This is really key here. I've asked it to use artifacts to do this. So now you can see this infographic being put together here within the artifacts window. And here's the infographic that it put together. I think this is really cool. So it has a little animation here that it coded into it. So when I mouse over it, it bounces a little bit. The window bounces a little bit and it has each of the models here and with each of the capabilities marked by a check mark or an X or even a, a limited capability. So I did this in a matter of about 10 seconds. And another really cool thing about this is that you can instantly refine this infographic that it has created simply by asking it. Whatever changes that you wanted to make to it, you can just type in the, the chat box. And this is a complete game changer for client presentations, reports, et cetera. Now, as impressive as those visuals are, this next feature completely transforms research workflows because as of the day I'm recording this, yesterday Anthropic announced finally that Claude has web search. Now, two caveats with this. Again, when I'm recording this, the third week of March, 2025, it is only currently available in the US and web search only works with Claude 3.7 Sonnet so far. So for this next use case, I wanna show you how you can use web search within a Claude project, which is gonna save you from having to go out and do research, say like in perplexity, then having to copy that into Claude or into a Claude project. Now you can do it all within Claude. So let's test this out in a Claude project. And I'm just gonna title this, NVIDIA and create this project here. So this week here, the third week of March, 2025, NVIDIA had their conference up in San Francisco, I think it was. And so what I wanna do is I want to, number one, test the web search capability within a project. And then I wanna take that result that it gives us as long as it's accurate and put it right into the project knowledge source as a markdown file. So I've just asked it, what are the big announcements from the NVIDIA conference this week, March, 2025? And let's see what it comes up with. All right, so as you can see here, the output is current. It's saying March 17th through the 21st, 2025. And it's going through the different announcements. These are all pretty accurate from the looks of it because I've been following this this week. And it looks like it's giving me a pretty good overview and it looks to be current. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to the bottom of the artifact screen here and click on this little icon that says add the current project. So now what I've been able to do is add that research directly as a project knowledge source within this project here. And it's doing it with Markdown, which is gonna take up less space within the project knowledge capacity. So as you can see here, this is a huge time saver. You don't have to go out to external tools again to do the research and then bring that research in the Claude and then have Claude 3.7 Sonnet do something with it. You can do all your web search now within Claude. And especially it's really cool within Claude projects. So you can add the output directly as a project knowledge file. For use case number three, with a single prompt, Claude 3.7 Sonnet can now build complete conversion optimized landing pages. And this isn't just placeholder text, it's gonna create a fully conceptualized mockup with proper information architecture, conversion elements, and also a responsive design. Check this out. So to create this landing page, you'll notice here, number one, it is a very short prompt. I wouldn't even call it a prompt. It's just simply two simple questions here. And number two, I was also very vague intentionally with the question. I said, please create me a SaaS landing page template designed extremely well, create all components required. That's all I asked it to do. As you can see here, it coded this page based on that ask. Now it did time out on me. As you can see here, all I had to do was click on continue and it continued. 
Check out this page that it created in a matter of minutes. Again, all from the simple prompt, please create me a SaaS landing page template designed extremely well, create all components required. That's it. And again, just like other things I'm showing you here today, if you wanna make any changes to this or what it creates for you, you can just simply ask it to change the colors, do it in dark mode, uh, make it more visually appealing. Whatever it is that you wanna do, you can ask 3.7 Sonnet in the chat box there and it'll make the changes for you right inside the artifact here. For this next use case, we're gonna dig into the extended thinking of Claude 3.7 Sonnet, specifically, it's really, really good at creating metrics dashboards for your business and also analyzing the data that you give to it. So basically you can upload your data, ask it for projections, create a dashboard for you with strategic insights about trends, anomalies, and opportunities. And so let me show you an example of what I'm talking about here. So for this, rather than me uploading an actual CSV from my business, I'm gonna ask it to create a fictional CSV report, sales report, for a digital product online business. So the first thing it's done, it's gone ahead and created this CSV report of fictional sales data. It then automatically went right into the next step of visualizing that data to help us better understand the sales trends from this fictional CSV. So it's created this dashboard here for me. I'm very underwhelmed by how it looks. So I've gone in here and said, actually turn this data into an exquisite looking interactive dashboard where I can see sales by product, month, and type. Let's see what it does. And that was created this really cool looking sales performance dashboard that again is interactive. So I can scroll down here, for example, and I can look at a line chart, a bar graph, this sort of stacked chart, and go down here and I can, if I change the product categories, let's just say I wanna do this and it's all interactive here, which is really, really cool. Again, I have this little pie chart down here. Uh, I can choose different time periods. It's pretty cool, right? All from a simple spreadsheet. Now for this next use case, I wanna use 3.7 Sonnet and compare it to the output from 3.5 Sonnet in creating a comprehensive style guide for your business. And we all need a style guide, right? Something that we're able to put into Claude or into a Claude project so that it creates content in our brand voice. And I'm gonna show these results to you side by side. I use the exact same prompt, which I'll show you here in just a second. And the, the differences between the two models is striking. Check this out. All right, so this is the prompt that I've used both for 3.7 Sonnet and 3.5 Sonnet. I'm working on a, a content style guideline for my online learning platform business, language, advantage. I've made that name up. The target audience is, and I've been pretty broad and pretty vague about this information because I want to see what it does with it. And here are the results side by side. On the left-hand side here, you have 3.7 Sonnet. On the right-hand side here, you have 3.5 Sonnet. And from minimal input about the business, it develops this complete language guide with vocabulary recommendations, formatting principles, and specific phrases to use. And it's all aligned with the brand identity. It really, as you can see here, gets into the details, gets into the nitty gritty here in terms of creating this comprehensive style guide, language patterns, it's really, really cool. Now on the right-hand side here, 3.5 Sonnet, I mean, look at the difference. I mean, you can just right off the bat see that it's much more high level than 3.7 Sonnet. So this is just another example of how much better 3.7 Sonnet is for these types of activities and these types of tasks. So again, the way I would use this output is I would use it within a prompt in the context section if I'm writing content or better yet, I would put it as a knowledge file into a Claude project. So I'm gonna be creating all my content within that Claude project. For the sixth use case of Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, we're gonna use it to create LinkedIn carousel posts. So as we've seen here in this video, 3.7 Sonnet is really good at creating visual design assets. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We're gonna create social media carousels or even presentation slides and use them as customizable starting points that we can then import into a tool like Figma or Canva. So I wanna do this in a Cloud project. So I'm just gonna call this LinkedIn, carousels 
And just like earlier in the video, we're gonna do some research using web search right here within the project so that we can be adding it to the project knowledge. So I've just typed in here, what are all the best practices of creating highly engaging LinkedIn carousel posts? Use artifacts for the answers. So I'm gonna go ahead and click. It's gonna use web search to do the research here. And as you can see here, it's ripping out some great information. So now what I'm gonna do, just like before, I'm gonna add to the current project. So as you can see here, it's been added over here as a knowledge file again in Markdown. So another knowledge source that I want to add to this project is I want to give it visuals of LinkedIn carousel posts. And so I can do web search here again in the project, but it's not going to give me the actual images. So I need to go out to my browser and do a search. And then once I find a really good article, what I can then do is convert that article into a PDF and then kick that PDF right in here to the knowledge source. Here's an article I found from Linked Helper, how to create a LinkedIn carousel posts and ads plus examples here, as you can see here, uh, it's pretty good. It has a lot of different tutorials, lots of different images and so forth. So what I'm gonna do here in my browser is I'm gonna create a cleaned up version of this. I'm gonna copy all of this and then I'm gonna bring this over into a Google Doc and then convert it into a PDF. All right, so I've got my saved PDF and I'm just gonna drag it right in here to the knowledge files. So now that I have these project knowledge sources, now I can write the prompt and repurpose content that I have. And in this example here, I'm gonna take the AI use case of the week, which I include in my AI playbook email newsletter every Sunday morning. And I'm gonna ask it to repurpose that piece of the newsletter into LinkedIn carousel content. So as you can see here, it's put together a slide by slide content draft, and it's also putting together the carousel designs and it's coding it right over here. So now that it's created this slide for us, all I have to do here is download the file. So then all we have to do is drag our downloaded image right into Figma and I can manipulate the image however I want. And then I just let 3.7 Sonnet finish out the rest of the slides there for my carousel, do the exact same thing, bring them right into Figma, edit them however I want. And now I've created an entire LinkedIn carousel in a matter of minutes. Now I will say you could do the exact same thing and import them into Canva, although you can't edit them once you get into Canva, which is why I would use a tool like Figma in order to do this. And finally, for use case number seven, we're gonna use Claude 3.7 Sonnet to do something as we've seen here today, it's really good at. We are gonna use it to analyze sales call transcripts, but not just do any kind of ordinary analysis. We're gonna organize the analysis into frameworks and visual training materials to improve the sales approach that either you or your salespeople or your sales team are taking. Check this out. So again, we're starting with a super simple prompt saying the following is an unsuccessful sales call transcript. The goal is to use the transcript as a teaching opportunity for our sales team, create visual training graphics based on the transcript that will show the sales team how they can make more sales. And obviously I wanna include the sales transcript in this, so I'm gonna attach it to this prompt. So as you can see here, the first thing it's doing, it's analyzing the transcript and it's going through, and the first thing it's created is key phases of an effective sales call. Now it's doing a pain point identification before and after. It's doing an objection handling framework. It's creating that, as you can see, it's coding visuals for this. So here's an example of the objection handling framework image that it just created. It's called the active objection handling framework. And it created this cool graphic that you can teach to your sales team. And then at the end, it did this really in-depth sales call analysis and key learning. So it summarized the call, what went wrong, uh, key turning points even gave timestamps for these different things and success strategies for future calls. And finally, it gives a step-by-step -step implementation plan for the sales team. So there you have it, seven mind-blowing use cases for Claude 3.7 Sonnet. I'm super impressed with this model. And as you can see here, you're able to do things in this model that you can't do in some of the other AI models. And this is only gonna continue to get better and better. If you wanna learn more practical ways to leverage AI like Claude 3.7 in your online business, I wanna invite you to join me inside my AI Playbook community. We are a group of online business owners focused on using AI to work less and increase profit in the process. I'm gonna to link to it in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.